And this feels like an absolutely perfect top water day. It's one of those days you read about it's cloudy. We got some storms coming in over there and it's hot. Got my shirt sticking to my back. But you know, a lot of people come out here and drag stuff around and fish real slow. But if you can make these bass react in the warmer months and warm water, they can really be suckers for it. So that's why I like to take these take these wake baits and other top water baits and work them quick along the surface, let them clack, make a bunch of sound and cover a bunch of water. It's a real good way to find concentrations of fish in a hurry. I like to use larger top water baits a lot of the time and I say that because my primary reason is casting distance. I'm, already, I'm to my backing right now. I'm using a 30 pound braided line with a you know an old 15 20 pound monofilament backing and just with a quick flick of the wrist i can cast this bait i mean geez probably 60 70 yards so that just helps you cover water more efficiently and helps you find those fish quickly you know there's times when you want to make you know real target oriented cast but for that kind of stuff i'd use more of a popper or something so i can keep it in the strike zone a little bit longer but Right now, all I'm doing, this is search and destroy mode. I'm trying to find fish quickly, and then that's when I'll bring out something like a popper or whatnot to really concentrate on those key areas. Rod angle is really important with weight baits as well. You know, if, if you, it's tempting when you have a bait on that you're gonna wind, it's tempting to wanna have your rod down like this, like you'd fish a crankbait. And that'll work with certain weight baits, but the majority of them, you'll make that long cast and then I like to kind of high stick it. I want that wake bait just barely breaking the surface, just real slow. And this particular wake bait here that I'm using today is a Mega Bass iJack. And it's got a really, really loud clacker on the inside. It's on some sort of a hinge. So when you reel that, it wobbles real wide in the water. And every time it wobbles, you hear it go clack, clack, clack. And that's what triggers that, those bass's curiosity. So. Like I said, I'll make this long cast here and I want that thing just barely swimming across the surface. Looks like a wounded bluegill, wounded shad, even a wounded perch. So you, oh, there he is. I was going down this bank and I decided to throw a uh, bluegill color weight bait. I saw a bunch of bluegill bluegill have been chasing this wake bait everywhere and sure enough where you find bluegill you're gonna find bass a lot of the year and you know regardless of where you go in the country you're gonna find some sort of bluegill or small panfish pattern um, you know the way I I like to imitate bluegills a lot because the way I see it a shad is a chicken nugget you know it's small they're fast and bass has to chase them a lot to uh to get a substantial meal it's got to eat several of them but this these bluegill that's like a steak man i mean they're the size of your hand sometimes maybe a little bit smaller and they're a little bit easier to pin up in the, in this shallow cover sometimes so instead of you know always getting in that shad 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 mentality sometimes you can increase the quality of your catch if you go with the bluegill because big bass especially all bass are opp opportunistic feeders but big bass especially they're smart they don't get big by being dumb they want the most bang for their buck when they go to eat something and a bluegill fits the bill there's one how fat that fish is. You tell me what that thing's eating. Bluegill. I said belly full of bluegill. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap this one up. We got some weather coming in, so we're gonna get off the water, but give weight base a try. It's a bunch of fun.